Windows 1.0 was Microsoft's first graphic-based computer system, which they released in 1985. They created it because back then, people actually had to manually type text commands into a system called MS-DOS just to launch an application on their computers. This process was simply too difficult and annoying to do. That is why Microsoft developed Windows 1.0. It ran on top of that MS-DOS system and made everything visual. So instead of typing, people could now open programs by easily clicking the icons. In those early days, the programs on Windows were still basic and light, offering things like a calculator, paint, and the game reversey. The screen layout was still restricted to a tiled mode, meaning you could not overlap the windows like you do with modern windows. Also, there was no minimize or maximize button. Despite being simple, this first Windows version often had errors and would sometimes display the infamous blue screen of death while showing weird characters and making strange noises. Another issue was that people needed a mouse to click on the icons, but at that time, a mouse was not widely used yet, especially because people only needed a keyboard to type those commands on MS-DOS. Windows 2 Windows 2.0 came out in 1987 as an updated version of Windows 1.0. This time, application windows could finally overlap, instead of being locked side by side. This feature was very useful because key programs like Microsoft Word and Excel were introduced during the Windows 2 era. Office workers were able to multitask better. They could, for example, type in Microsoft Word, while reviewing numbers in an overlapping Excel spreadsheet at the same time. Later on, Apple sued Microsoft. Apple claimed that the overlapping window design was a copy of the Macintosh look. Fortunately, Microsoft won the case because Apple had previously asked Microsoft to help create Word and Excel for the Macintosh computers. Since the companies worked together closely, Microsoft was allowed to use some of Apple's interface concepts for Windows, when Windows started gaining more popularity, Apple suddenly sued Microsoft for copying their design. That is why the judge allowed Microsoft to keep this overlapping window design, a feature that remains to this day. Windows 3 Windows 3.0 was released in 1990, and it was the first edition that truly made Windows popular. The reason for its success was the introduction of a full-color graphical interface that looked much cleaner and better than the prior version. Also, computers were using the Intel 386 processor by then, which was a newer and more powerful chip for that time. Because of this, Windows could run heavier programs like CorelDRAW and open more software simultaneously. Two years later, Windows 3.1 was released, introducing the drag-and-drop feature. Instead of having to copy or move a file using a specific keyboard shortcut, people could now simply drag the file and drop it into a new location. Since this feature made computers much simpler to operate, not only businesses and corporations used Windows, now even everyday people started purchasing their own personal computers as well. Windows 95 Windows 95 was launched in 1995 and it is often considered the first Windows version with truly modern features. Visually, the logo and overall branding, including the four-color flag design and the start button, was a major, revolutionary change from the earlier tiled versions. The interface was dramatically different because it had a much tidier look and introduced the famous start menu and taskbar, allowing you to access all your programs in one convenient place. Another fantastic addition was that Windows 95 already included a plug-and-play feature. This meant that if you plugged in a new device like a printer, your computer would automatically recognize it so you could use it immediately. This may sound standard today, but before Windows 95, people had to manually install a specific software driver before they could use any new device. Oh yes, Windows 95 also came with Internet Explorer which introduced people to the internet, but at that time, it was unreliable and often crashed, so people did not really use it. Windows 98 Windows 98 was released in 1998 as a much improved version of Windows 95. This time, when people browsed the internet, Internet Explorer did not crash as frequently as it did in Windows 95. 
Another important upgrade was that before Windows 98, computers had different connection ports for every device, which was confusing. But Windows 98 introduced comprehensive USB support, meaning devices like mice, keyboards, and others could finally use one standard connection, which is USB. Not only that, but Windows 98 also came with dual monitor support, which was useful for people like gamers and professionals if they required more screen space. Unfortunately, Windows 98 was fairly buggy and unstable. In fact, during that time, Bill Gates and his employee were conducting a live demonstration of Windows 98 on CNN. But then, the computer suddenly suffered the blue screen of death. Notice that this scanner build... Whoa. <laughs> Windows Millennium Edition was released in 2000, and it is widely viewed as the worst Windows version ever. This is because it was so unstable. Simply opening software could make your computer very slow or simply crash. In terms of features, it did introduce System Restore, which creates a backup copy of your system files. So, let us say you are installing a new driver or doing a Windows update, but then your computer keeps crashing or acting strangely. This feature allows your computer to return the entire system to the way it was right before everything got messed up. But sadly, even the system restore feature did not always work properly either. So yes, that is why people back then called Windows ME the mistake edition. Windows XP was released in 2001, and it is considered to be one of the best Windows versions ever. If we look at the interface, it appears more modern than the previous versions and similar to how Windows looks today. This is because Windows XP was already using the Windows NT system, while the older Windows versions still use the MS-DOS. This move to the NT kernel is why XP was so much more stable. Other than its appearance, Windows XP also had a faster startup time than the previous versions and better hardware detection. So, when you plug in something, it had fewer crashes and errors than in Windows 98 or Windows Millennium Edition. Oh yes. Windows XP also featured integrated CD burning that made transferring and sharing files much more convenient. This feature was great because CDs were the most popular kind of storage at that time. Windows Vista was released in 2007 as the successor to Windows XP. It introduced the Arrow interface, which added see-through windows called Arrow Glass and a three-dimensional animation when switching between windows called Arrow Flip. This was basically meant to give Windows an attractive look. Vista also added a security function called the User Account Control, or UAC, which is helpful for preventing malicious software disguised as a regular application from infecting or making unwanted changes to your computer. However, both of these upgrades actually became problems themselves. That visually appealing arrow interface was too heavy to run on Windows Vista. It used too many resources which made your computer slow. Also, the UAC pop-up appeared too often because this feature would constantly ask for permission before any program could make a system change. That is why it became frustrating. Windows 7. Windows 7 was released in 2009, and it is also considered to be one of the best versions of Windows. Visually, it kept the good parts from Windows Vista, like the Arrow interface, but without the slowness and performance problems. Windows 7 also featured a search bar that instantly finds applications, settings, and documents in case you forgot where you saved your file. Oh, yes, it had a smart feature called Snap that let users drag a window to the side of the screen to automatically resize it to half the screen, which was perfect for comparing documents or writing while reading something else. So, with all those features and no major issues, Windows 7 actually became the most used operating system of its time. Windows 8 Windows 8 was launched in 2012, and it was one of Microsoft's worst Windows versions ever. It was not because it was slow or constantly crashing like Windows Millennium Edition or Windows Vista, but because Microsoft removed the classic start menu and replaced it with a start screen filled with live tiles that displayed things like the weather and a calendar. This may have been suitable for tablets, as this interface was friendly for touchscreens. But since most people used laptop and desktop computers with a mouse and keyboard, 
it felt completely awkward because you had to scroll horizontally to the right side to see all your other software. Since people were so upset about Windows 8 being strange and different, Microsoft finally released Windows 8.1 a year later, which brought back the start button and other familiar elements. Windows 10 Windows 10 was released in 2015, and Microsoft initially said it would be the final version of Windows that would just keep getting continuous updates. But in reality, Microsoft's official date for the end of support for Windows 10, Home, and Pro is October 14th, 2025. However, for those who need more time, Microsoft has recently announced an extended security update, ESU program, which will allow users to pay for security updates for up to three years, additional years beyond that date, until October 2028. Anyway, when it first came out, Windows 10 felt like a mix between Windows 7 and 8. It brought back the normal start menu, but kept some of the modern tile design. It also introduced virtual desktops, letting users separate their workspaces. Also, it has a task view that can display all open applications and switch between them easily. However, Windows 10 still had some really frustrating problems too, like forcing your computer to restart at random times or performing random Windows updates, and sometimes a percentage would get stuck while your screen remained blue. It even became a meme because of that. Windows 11 Windows 11 came out in 2021 and took the place of Windows 10 as the new version of Windows. Visually, it looks similar. The difference is the centered start menu in Windows 11. Another difference is that Windows 11 has a multitasking feature called Snap Layouts. A layout option will appear when your cursor hovers over the Maximize button. This can be useful when making a presentation or writing a document while looking for some reference material. Another useful multitasking enhancement was the new tab feature in File Explorer, which made it simpler to organize and move many files without having to open multiple windows. But honestly, there is nothing really special or dramatically different about Windows 11 when compared to Windows 10. In fact, last year, in 2024, Windows 10 was still the most used Windows version anyway. Microsoft has not yet officially announced a product called Windows 12. Instead, they are rolling out major annual updates to the current system, like the confirmed Windows 11 version 25H2, coming in the fall of 2025. However, industry experts suggest Microsoft has returned to a three-year release schedule for all new Windows platforms. Since Windows 11 was released in 2021, a brand new operating system is highly anticipated between late 2024 and late 2025. This next generation is expected to be defined by a heavy focus on artificial intelligence, with new features requiring specialized computer hardware. For now, remember that Windows 11 remains the current, fully supported version. Look for an official announcement at a major Microsoft event before you believe the hype. For over 20 years, I've lived and breathed this technology. On the Verified Explainer, I put that practical experience to work, spending the extra time to properly research, verify, and simplify complex topics for you, cutting through the myths to deliver the facts. If you appreciate the effort and experience that goes into every single video, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to ring the bell so you never miss a verified truth. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another verified truth, so stay tuned.